I'm Rebel Star Girl. Before I get into the contents of today's video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe with any critiques, questions, or suggestions. In today's video, we're going to be creating DIY pins in four different ways. If you don't know, I've started a little pin collection. Mom got me this display thing for Easter, and so I thought in order to fill it up and expand my collection, I would make some pins of my own. So, let's get started. For the first kind of pins I'm going to be making, the first thing we need to do is draw our designs. I want you to do these designs digitally because a lot of the other pins you can't do digital designs. And for these pins, I'd have to draw quite small if I want to do them traditionally. But this way, I can do it digitally and then shrink it down to print. The first design I'm doing is of my original character, Hannah. After you finish the design, you're going to want to shrink it down on a photo editor. I tried to shrink it down on my drawing software, but it ended up becoming very pixeled. Then all you're going to want to do is print them out, put the cabochon on top of the drawing, chase around it, and cut out the circle. After you've cut out your design, you're going to want to take some Mod Podge or other kind of craft glue and put it on the back of the cabochon. I wouldn't put it on the paper as you might smear the ink depending on what kind of printer you have. Once you put the glue on, just stick the cabochon right to the design. I did four other designs. One is my logo with the flower and the cross, but the other ones are sketches of my original characters. The first one, which you can see here, is my OC Riley. He is my newest OC and the twin brother of one of my already existing original characters, Cassidy. This design and the design I just did of Hannah are two of my favorite designs and two of my favorite pins from the entire video. This next design is another original character. His name is Callum. He is in the same story as Riley and Hannah. I'm still working on his personality. I don't know too much about him yet, but I love drawing him. I just think he's really cool. This design is not an original character, but my persona. I love this one so much that once I finished it, I changed my profile picture here on YouTube and also on Instagram to this, and I put her in the channel banner. So you'll be seeing this little design probably for a while. I wanted to do this one originally, but it was the last one that I drew, so I was getting kind of tired and I was going to cut it out, but my mom really wanted one of me, so I actually ended up printing two of these and making one for her as well. And this design is of my original character, Zach. Out of all of the digital designs, I think this one is my least favorite. I really like the original drawing in my sketchbook. There's something about this digital version, which I think it's the eyes, I don't really know, but it's probably my least favorite out of all the digital designs. But overall, I love all of these designs. I think these all came out amazing. Once I had finished all the designs, I sent them to my mom and had her shrink them and print them out. And I just repeated the same process as I showed you for Hannah of putting the cabochon on top of the drawings, tracing it, and cutting it out. Once everything was cut out, I took my Mod Podge and did the exact same thing of putting it on the back of the cabochon and then sticking the cabochon to the design. Now, what I found is that sometimes the Mod Podge would leave streaks. I realized about halfway through the process that using a thicker coat really lessens how many streaks you'll get. Though sometimes it can kind of create these blobs that distort the color. I still think all the pins came out really good and it doesn't bother me enough to redo them all, so... But I would say using a thick, even coat will give you the best result. Here's how they all came out.
you know, some of those streaks that I was talking about. I think it's really just because of the way that Mod Podge dries. Sometimes it can be a little streaky. But if you were using thicker paper, you might not have that problem. I'm not really sure because I was just using printer paper. But even with a thicker paper, I would still use a thicker coat to try to avoid streaks. The next kind of pins I'm going to be doing are a little different. I've never seen anybody do this, but I had all of these cupcake toppers lying around from my birthday. And as you can see, they're all Demon Slayer. And I had turned a few of them into little corkboard pins from my mom for Easter. I mean, yeah, basically I'm doing this because I already had them lying around and I figured this would be a good way to use them. They are just cardboard, so they're not the sturdiest pins. But in order to counteract this, I actually had two of each design. So as you can see, in order to make them a little thicker, I'm gluing them together. There are a few that I only have one of because I used the second pair to make pins for my mom. For these ones, I just slap Mod Podge on them. Honestly, most of these will probably just stay on display. And if I had them on my bag, I would know to be careful with them. So if you're looking for something sturdier, this might not be the way to go. But if you have something like this, like a cupcake topper or other little decorations lying around, this is a good way to use them. To stick them together, I just used a heavy coat of Mod Podge and then I would put them under something heavy like the Mod Podge container or a book or something. And if there was still spots that were peeling off, I would just stick more Mod Podge and stick it back under the book until they were completely stuck together. After this, I just went over the side that I wanted to be visible, so the side that had less peeling or cracks or, you know, or weird stuff from it being a cupcake topper and sitting in my craft supplies for the last month. And I just applied a thick coat of Mod Podge. I actually applied four coats of Mod Podge because I wanted it to be thick, but I don't think that's really necessary. So you can apply as few or as many coats as you want. I would apply at least one though to make it kind of shiny and probably last a little bit longer third kind of pins I'm making I really wanted to try because I found them on Pinterest and I'd never seen anybody do these before. So basically what you do is you take some packing tape and you stick it to whatever surface you're working on. And I placed my scissors underneath realizing that if I stuck it down to my desk I wouldn't be able to peel it back up. So I would leave one little end kind of sticking up so you could peel it. And then what you do is you take a hot glue gun and you just make a big thick coat of glue. After you do that, you peel up the tape and flip it over. Now the person on Pinterest drew her designs and then cut them out and put them on top of this hot glue. I already done a lot of drawing and if you know me, you know I have a very large sticker collection. So I thought it would be fun to try using some of the stickers, but you can of course draw your own or print out things on paper. It doesn't have to be a sticker because you're gonna put another piece of packing tape on top to keep it together. So it can just be a flat piece of paper. The first sticker I tried was this small puffy sticker though, and honestly it's my least favorite pin of the entire video. It's just small. If it was a little bigger, I think I would like it more. It did work though. You can see I tried to put that second layer of packing tape on top, but because this was a puffy sticker it didn't really work, so you can see me trying to peel that off. And I was not paying attention because a lot of this process I was like just out of the camera, so I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, once you have your sticker or paper or printout or whatever you're using, you just want to cut around the edges. And honestly, the hot glue really isn't that hard to cut through. It was pretty easy. Once that first one was done, I did two more using actual flat stickers. I don't have any psych pins right now, so I decided to go with two of my psych stickers. These pins look very handmade, but there's something about them I really like, and I really like the idea that I can use my stickers because I have a lot of stickers and not enough places to put them. And if I really like a sticker, I want to be able to keep it forever and not put it somewhere that's going to get damaged or thrown away. So I really like the idea of being able to turn the stickers that I really like into pins and keep them for a lot longer than I would if they were on a phone case or even a laptop. Oops. Also, surprisingly, these are really durable. Because the hot glue and the packing tape and the paper is pretty flexible, if you drop them or hit them into something, really the worst I can think that would happen is the pin back falls off and you just have to re-glue it. 
Uh, my finger is dangerously close to that hot glue gun. I did try to smooth the back out a little bit by rubbing the hot glue gun kind of over it and applying more hot glue where there was little divots. I didn't do a really good job of this, but it doesn't really bother me. If the texture on the back bothers you, I'm sure with a little bit more time and patience, you could smooth it out a lot more. Personally, it doesn't really bother me, so I didn't really take a lot of time to do this. And this sticker was a little wider, so I actually used two pieces of packing tape side by side. So there is a little line on top from where the packing tape overlaps, but it's really not that noticeable. And again, it doesn't really bother me. If it bothers you, then maybe just use stickers or designs that you can put on one piece of packing tape, or I don't know if there's thicker packing tape you can buy. Maybe you can try finding a wider piece of packing tape. And there we go, just putting the two pieces of packing tape on top to seal it in. I really gotta work with staying in the camera and not being distracted by YouTube videos because I keep going out of the frame. What I did find easier is putting one layer of hot glue, cutting it out, and then smoothing and adding another layer of hot glue if you want it thicker, because the thicker the hot glue, the harder it's gonna be to cut out the design. The last ones we're going to be doing are shrink dinks. I think this is the most classic way of making a DIY pin. I've seen a lot of people do it. I do really like the idea of shrinky dinks. They're really fun, but I feel like out of all of these, they are the most finicky. The first design I'm doing is of my original character, Callum. I had the sketch in my sketchbook, and I thought it was a pretty good size that when I shrunk it down, the pin would be a good size. Once the design was done, what you're gonna wanna do is take a baking sheet and the instructions say put parchment paper down, but I don't have parchment paper, so I use tin foil. And the only downside about using tin foil is that sometimes it can crinkle up and create a weird texture on the back of the shrinky dink. So I tried to make it a little bit longer than the sheet and curl it over the ends. Not so much that it would be touching the direct rack of the oven, but just a little bit over the handle so that hopefully it would stay a little bit more flat. Once I covered the pan in the tin foil, I just popped it into the oven and unfortunately our oven is kind of dirty so I wasn't able to get the nice satisfying footage of this one shrinking. I do clean the oven out a little bit and try to get some footage of the next pin so you can see that one shrink. This next design I'm doing is from one of my favorite manga series. This is Chocolate Ball. He is from the manga Clay Lord, Master of Golems. And no one knows this manga exists. It has three volumes and I love it. It is a nice, quick, easy read. It is so good. There's lots of action. The world is super interesting. I love the character design. Interactions between the characters are so wholesome. It does get a little dark and sad, but overall, I would recommend this manga for a much younger age than I would recommend almost any other manga. There's no swearing, there's no fan service, and overall it's a good story with an interesting world and interesting characters, and I just love the creativity and the concept, and I wish more people read it, so if you have a chance to read it, I would definitely recommend. This pin is one of my favorites from the entire video. I think it came out perfect, it is so cute, and since no one knows Clay Lord exists, there's like no merch or no anything, so the only way for me to get any pins or anything is for me to make them myself. This last design I'm doing is also from Clay Lord Master of Gollum. She is one of the main characters, her name is Rose Quartz. I absolutely love her, she's so cute. This isn't the first time I've drawn her, I actually did a glass painting of her that I posted over on my Instagram, and I really liked that, that was my first time glass painting, and I honestly really liked the way that it came out. She's really fun to draw. She has a lot of details and I like all of the pink and she is a really cool character. I really like her. I honestly really like most of the characters. They're all really cool. She was the biggest and had a lot of big areas so it took me a while to fill her in. She also took me the longest because as you can see this first attempt didn't really work. I tried to save it by going over with more paint afterward, but that's not gonna help where it curled up around the shoulders and the skirt. I think maybe I took her out too early. I wasn't really paying attention and I didn't see that it had curled and I smushed it flat right on top of those curls. And so now the curls are there to stay. So the next day we try again. So here we go again, filling in that skirt. I ended up making it a little bit shorter, so it's not as tall, which I don't really know if that helped or made a difference, but I decided to do it because I felt that it was a little bit tall. So I tried to do all of the colors first and then go in with the line, which was okay. 
but you can see when it's cooked the lines aren't really able to be seen as well because I did this. You'll see why in a minute. All right, into the oven she goes. Take one last look. Oh yes, I am opening the oven with my foot. And the reveal. Uh -huh. oh, look it. Like I said, the paint didn't crack, but it made that weird texture. And there's just random pieces of plastic dripping off. And um, yeah. But if we flip it over, it's not actually half bad. I kind of like the ombre in the hair. But like I said, because I put that color on first and then the line art, because I had to flip it over, I can't see the line art as well. I thought originally I would keep the side that the paint was on, but since it was so cracked, I couldn't do that. And I was actually able to get rid of all of those edges that were dripping off just by taking a nail file and sending it down. I sanded the edges of all of these just to give it a smoother texture, so if there's any bits you don't like, you can just send them down. Hi everybody, this is mine, and yes, I got it, it's an ice cream. And soon you'll see it in the oven. So yeah, let's get started. So my siblings saw me making these drink things and they really wanted to make some too. So my sister made some ice cream cones and my brother made this happy 100 subscribers for me and this little one that we turned into a keychain from Piggy. The last thing to do is to glue all of the pin backs onto the pins. If you don't want to buy pin backs, you can also just use safety pins. I personally wanted the pin back, so I just hop on Amazon. And this was like $6 for like 120 of them. So in my opinion, it was worth it. And the reveal? This was so much fun. Let me know in the comments which pin is your favorite. These three are definitely mine. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I would love to make pins again in the future, so if you have any different ways or techniques to make pins, let me know and I would love to try them. As usual, I have no idea what the next video is gonna be or when it's gonna come out, but whenever that is, I will see you then. Bye!